Okay, in this presentation what we're going to do is uh, derive Laplace transforms from first principles. Now the key definition here is this one here, that the Laplace transform of a function f of t is the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st by f of t, that function f of t, uh, with respect to dt. Okay, so just to sort of bear that one in mind. So what we're going to do here is actually try out this uh, function here, just sort of see will that we, can we get this to work. This is the Laplace transform of e to the a t. Okay. So if I was just to write it out using that formula written out upstairs, up there, I'd have e to the minus s t uh, times e to the a t. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to express e to the minus st uh, times e to the at. I'm going to add them together, okay? And what I'm going to do is write them like this. e, now I could write it as a minus st, okay? Now, if you were to go that direction, sooner or later you'd hit a sort of dead end. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually just one more thing. I'm going to write it as minus s minus a times t. E to the minus s minus a times t. Okay. Right. So we're getting the uh, uh, integral of that from 0 to infinity with respect to t. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay, that calculation there. Now, I'm just going to scroll back. I just made some extra space there, so let's just bring that down. So that is, uh, we have a constant uh, times t here. So the integral, just in general, of a t dt. Actually, I won't use a. I'll use k, just to be, just to be, because I've used a already. Is one over k e to the kt plus c. That's just the sort of standard integral. So uh, we have, for us, k is minus s minus a, okay, minus s minus a. So we have 1 over minus s minus a by this uh, value here, e to the minus s minus a times t. And we evaluate that at infinity and zero. Okay, grand. Now, let's just scroll down there a bit more. We have to evaluate both of those at uh, infinity and zero. So, one minus s minus a. So, let's evaluate it at infinity. So, we have e by minus s minus a infinity minus e minus s minus a zero. Well that one goes to one pretty clearly. Anything to the power of zero is one. But what about e to the minus s minus a infinity? Well this is a limit, a question of limits. So the limit of that essentially as the limit of this as t goes to infinity is zero. E to the minus infinity is essentially zero. Well, okay. So that essentially reduces down to zero. So what do we got? We have one over minus s minus a times zero minus one. Okay. The minuses cancel out. Okay. So we have 1 over s minus a. So the Laplace transform of e to the a t equals 1 over s minus a. Now, this is a very useful point to uh, in, in your calculations. The thing about this is, 
let's just go back up here. This is the original Laplace transform calculation. Now, but the thing is, if we want to find the Laplace transform of cos of a t, we could go e to the minus sine t cos of a t. But what we could do instead is use this from now on. Now, I just want to draw your attention to a fact. This is actually makes for much cleaner uh, Laplace transform calculations. Suppose we want to find out the, the Laplace transform of cos of at. Okay, and we wanted to do it from first principles. There's a couple of approaches you can take, and one is to calculate it directly. Okay, but another approach is one that I'd sort of recommend more so is to rely on the fact that I'll write it in black here. This is identity cos or no, not black cos of at is equal to one half of e to the minus i a t plus e to the no sorry that's one's plus plus e to the minus i a t Okay. So what does that mean? So essentially, if we're getting the invert, the cos, uh, the sorry, the Laplace transform first first principles minus s t of cos of t. What we can put in there instead is the uh, those expressions there. No, actually, we don't even. Sorry, there, there's my pen. What we can say is that we can actually uh, cos of at equals half of that. So rather than do out this one here, and my pen, my, it's just I get a bit distracted by my software jamming up. We could evaluate that, but I'm saying use the evaluation you've done already, the uh, derivation you've done already, and what you could say is the Laplace transform of cos of at is equal to half the Laplace transform of e to the minus uh, e to the plus at plus half of the Laplace transform of e to the minus at iat Put in the I there. Now you see the thing about this is it doesn't really matter that we have a complex term there. A can be a complex number. A is allowed to be a complex number. And um, so, what is that? Using the evaluations we have already, it's half of I put. I'll just keep the half on the outside altogether, just for the sake of space. That is one over s minus i a plus one over s plus i a. Okay, so cross multiply them out, or it is uh, multiply both sides, or cross multiply them essentially. What we have is one half of s plus i a plus s minus i a over s minus i a times s plus i a okay working that out a little bit more we would have half that's what the, what's the top line s plus i a so that's 2s i a minus ia that's just zero so it's 2s multiply below s squared uh, plus ia minus ia that is minus i squared a squared okay the half will cancel out with the two minus i squared is plus one it's 
so plus and so that there you have your answer the answer is the plus transform cos of at equals s over s squared plus a squared now just as a remark actually you can do something similar for a uh, sine the si uh, sine of at can be written as 1 over 2i by e to the iat minus e to the minus iat. So a similar sort of calculation there that is much, um, it's actually not as, e it's not as quick as doing it by integration by parts, okay, but the, well it might be about the same, but it's much cleaner is to actually just uh, calculate from first principles that part there and then just use identities such as this one and this one. So we leave that there.